Yeah. Because Hawaiians are so connected to the land. National anthem came on, and we were just newly dating. And you said kind of under your breath to yourself, like, I hate this song. And I looked at you, and I could not believe what was coming out of your mouth. And I did not understand, like, where this hate came from. Today, I have my favorite person here on this earth <laughs> on Well Made. Um, for those who don't know, Kiloni is my husband. He is a firefighter, and he is Hawaiian. And I felt like... Who else to have on this episode than you to talk about some issues going on in Hawaii and just educate our followers who aren't, who don't know much about it and traveling and giving them tips and tricks. But before we dive into it, for those who aren't, who don't know, Kiloni is Kanaka. And so I want to kind of have you explain what that is exactly. So Kanaka pretty much means someone who is native Hawaiian that is born and raised in the islands. Um, whereas you could have what they call Kama'aina, which is someone that's born there, but they're not of, you know, native descent. Or you could have moved there and you live there now, so you're considered Kama'aina because you live there, but you are not of the Hawaiian blood and you're not of the Hawaiian descent. And it's the same thing with local. Like, you can be considered local, but you're not considered Hawaiian. You don't have the Hawaiian blood running through you. Exactly. Yep. So yeah, you would call those people Kama'aina, I think. And what I feel like is very important for listeners to understand is before you travel to Hawaii and before you go there, I think it's so important to know where it came from and the history behind it. And this is so crazy because when I started dating you and not to put you on blast, but we, I come from a very military background family and we are very patriotic and we were at our friend's um, baseball game yep. and the national anthem came on and we were just newly dating and you said kind of under your breath to yourself like I hate this song and I looked at you and I could not believe what was coming out of your mouth like my jaw was on the ground and I walked out the stadium and I told you I said if you aren't patriotic like if you don't love this country this is not going to work because I have six brothers, well, five brothers in the military. My parents were in the military and I did not understand like where this hate came from. And it wasn't until you started educating me on the history of Hawaii, which is insane to me because this is not taught in the mainland and mainland is considered the main U S and then you have Hawaii, but this is not taught in the mainland of how Hawaii even became a state. And please forgive me for all my Hawaiian listeners, because first off, what's the correct way to say Hawaii? You say it Hawaii. Yes, that yep. is the correct way. I don't speak native Hawaiian tongue, and I want to make sure I'm respectful for the Hawaiians through this platform. But I also, I just don't say it correctly, and I don't want to... I just want to bring that out there. I know I don't say it correctly. It's not your first language. You'll be out. You'll be just fine. You're doing just fine. So. Yes. Okay. So bring us back to the very beginning of Hawaii and educate our listeners who don't understand. Growing up from a very young age, you're just kind of brought up in this this way or style that you you don't love America for what's happened for the history of Hawaii. So Hawaii used to be its own monarchy, its own kingdom, and they were completely out there on their own, surviving and having sustainable living. They were thriving there by themselves. So they didn't need anybody else. But over time, it had gotten visited and U.S. was there. And one of the kings that uh, at the time for uh, with men that he trusted, um, they basically held him at gunpoint and said, we need you to sign over all the land here or you're going to die. And and he also said that they would kill the people, some of the people of Hawaii as well. So rather than having bloodshed, he signed it over so that he could save and protect his people and himself. And that's kind of how Hawaii started to become a state at that time. You know, he didn't want to give that up because that, that this land that we have is so precious to us. It's part of who we are. And, and we have taught that at a very young age. So when did this all take place? The the event that happened with King uh, Kalakaua is his name. That, I don't even know. I think it was like late 1800s or something, or maybe even early 1900s. But um, when Hawaii actually became a state, it was like 1959. Um, so super recent. So you're talking like there's probably people alive now still that w were part of a, the Hawaii kingdom 
and then now had gotten, had gotten taken over illegally by the United States government. Just imagine somebody coming into your country and they, they, you think they're your friends and then they, they take it from you because of what it has to offer and how it benefits you. Right. Okay. So then I just want to be clear too. You don't feel that way anymore about the United States. This is something that was kind of just brought on to you growing up. You're taught the history of how you guys became part of the United States and naturally feeling that anger, but it's now you, you are patriotic. You love the United States, but you don't love how Hawaii became a state. Yeah. I, I definitely am proud to be American. I'm also very proud to be Hawaiian, you know? And so I think being married to you, I've opened my eyes more, you know, to, to the U S and what it has to offer. I don't, I don't know what it would look like if Hawaii was still a kingdom and what that would mean for me or our family, you know? So I definitely feel bad and I feel the sorrow for our native Hawaiian people because that land is our land, you know, but it is, it is not no longer, um, that way. And a lot of people are having to, to move because they can't afford to live there. Um, Price out of paradise. Price out of paradise. So you can understand why a lot of these natives feel the way they do. Yeah, which is totally understandable. And I think one of the things that we're not educated on is that people believe that they, in order for them to survive, your people, that they have to have tourism. That I, and I have my own feelings on that, which I believe that they could obviously survive on their own. They did it before and they can do it now. Like, what are your thoughts when people say to you, well, Hawaii needs tourism or they're not going to survive? I think that couldn't be anything further from the truth. It's kind of like Nels on a talk. It, it is because like I told you earlier, like Hawaii was a, a very, very well run uh, kingdom. Like they could thrive and sustain life on their own yeah. because Hawaiians are so connected to the land and they know how to survive um, and they know how to have this community that people serve each other and they're not looking for anything in return. So you just have this great community of people that, you know, are able to help each other out. And we're taught at a young age, like how to survive that way. Yeah. It's interesting to me because after being educated through you too, um, there, you went to high school and there's a school called Kamehameha, correct? Kamehameha. Kamehameha. <laughs> I'm trying. I no, really, I, really, really try. That's fine. Um, but you, it's a school that is a private school and it's for the Hawaiian kids for Hawaiian blood. And when I first learned about this, I was so uneducated where I thought, Oh my gosh, this is kind of like racist. Like you can only be Hawaiian to come here. You have to have Hawaiian blood in you. And it's this really high end school. Like you get really great education there. And I want you to kind of educate our followers of what exactly is Kamehameha. <laughs> I'm so terrified to say anything. You're fine. I'm terrified because I just don't want to be disrespectful. I So Kamehameha, what it is exactly and why it's not racist and the whole concept of it. So there was a lady, uh, a woman, and her name is Bernice Pawahi Bishop. And she created Kamehameha schools to to make sure that the children of Hawaii were were educated and they're smart and they could thrive in today's world. And so she started this, this school for them and she just gave, and it's not racist now um, because anyone can get into the school, but they give preference to Hawaiian children because, you know, like I, I said earlier, um, Hawaii was overtaken. And so she just wanted to make sure that the people of the land could still thrive and live there and give back and run the place if they needed to. Yeah. And I think what's really cool with that school, you take classes on how to learn Hawaiian language, correct? That's correct. And then you also learn things like hula and you sing, do you learn those type of things? It's a very cultural school. Like okay. we, we learn the Hawaiian language and um, we sing and we dance in the cultural styles and we learn about that stuff. Um, but we're also still bound by, you know, American educational guidelines. So you still learn different languages from around the world. You still have English, you still have math, you still have, you know, social studies, history, all that stuff. Wait, I have to ask, 
When you're in school, do they educate you about how Hawaii became a state and was overthrown? Or is it because it is part of the U.S. that's not part of the curriculum and you're just taught from your aunties and uncles? Oh, it's it's part of our curriculum. Mm, yeah, That's so I just I just think it's something that... And I think it's important because that's something you don't want to forget. You know? Yeah. It, yeah. It's so interesting. Well, talking about how Hawaii was overthrown and then people coming in and tourism, a big question that we get asked a lot on social media is how you travel respectfully to Hawaii. And when people are visiting there, how they can either give back or just respectfully travel. What are some ways? Well, I think you said it there. Like all it really comes down to is respect, right? And so locals, they're bombarded and. By How so? The, oh, just, Go just like, detail. um, so they're bombarded like by tourism. Like their, their island isn't there. It doesn't feel like traffic. Ho- doesn't feel like them, like their island anymore. You're talking traffic. You're talking housing, housing. You're talking busy lines at the grocery store. You're talking your beaches that are filled, like no parking spots at the park, like all Trash. these. All these different things that that are happening because of tourism. So, the the bare minimum that you is expected of you is respect. So, making sh- sure you pick up after yourselves, making sure you're considerate of other other people around you, the locals, and and even the other tourists around you, like respecting the ocean and the wildlife, um, respecting uh, people on the road. Like it's it's a simplis- simplistic lifestyle there, and you don't want to bring what you left to Hawaii yeah. because you're coming there for, for the paradise, for the relaxed vibe, you know, and you don't want to bring what you brought or what you have in the mainland or wherever you came from. And you don't want to bring that to Hawaii. Yeah. You know, some other things too, that people can do. It's like, it's okay if you're going to sightsee, but just pull off to the road because people are going to and from work. That's something you don't even think about. And it creates so much traffic or, like when you're at the beach and you see trash, it may not be yours, but just like pick it up and like pick things up. Another thing is too, is, um, oxybenzone and your sunscreen is sure. huge because this can kill the coral reef and it causes so much damage to the oceans. So when you're going over there, a good indicator, if you have a spray that it has it in there and it's also horrible for your system and testosterone and hormones, you shouldn't be having it on your skin, period. But when also traveling over there, that shouldn't be in the sunscreen. Thankfully, it's now banned. And I think, I believe it's Badger, the brand, which is so cool. They're the ones who helped get that banned. And so I will, I will promote them and I will like support them because that's so cool. So you can't buy that in Hawaii, but bringing it over is important. And I also think too, it's really important to educate yourself before you go to like learn how to travel with Aloha, like Kiloni. You danced hula in um, high school, correct? That's right. And one of the stories that he told me is that you, when people would come into a luau, mm-hmm. you would give them a lay. Sure. And people would make jokes all the time and be like, oh, are you laying my wife? And like just jokes that are so cringy, but they think it's so funny, but it's actually really so disrespectful to the culture. And I, speaking of that, I want to I want to go into also details. Do you have anything to add with that? No, I think you're you're hitting all the points. It's just it's stuff that like we've heard it all a million times before, you know. So you're like, come on. But like. this is where it's so hard, and I'm not I'm not condemning any of this behavior whatsoever. But this is what it's so hard is you don't know what you don't know, and I got crucified from a lot of people in your life because I wasn't educated on it and I had no idea. I I truly had no idea anything about the history and that's my bad. I'm taking full responsibility that I didn't educate myself before going, but this is what's so great is that we have this platform and that we can try to educate and have people travel there with a little bit more of Aloha spirit. And also too, a lot of people and and especially my family, they hear the word Howley a lot there and people it can go both ways. It can be a very derogatory word, um, explaining someone by their skin color, but it also can be just simply explaining somebody by the skin color. And so kind of go, I want people to understand what Howley actually means and why it's meant that and ways that people use it. Before we hit up about Howley's, um, <laughs> I do want to say 
It is important that you do get educated before you come. But in, when you come, I think it's also important that you're open-minded about a lot of things because yeah. what it's what you don't know is hard, right? Like you, you can't expect to know everything about the culture and stuff, but like be open-minded when you come too. Yeah. Um, but moving into Haole, like, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, I would say majority of the time growing up, I'm like, oh, these damn Haole is like, it's definitely used in that way because. Explain what Haole means. And why it be, and why that word is that way? So haole is uh, it's broken down into two parts. Ha is breath or life, and then ole is like zero or none. So it almost is like breathless or no life. Okay, and so it was made when uh, foreigners, white people, came and you know they went to greet the white man. And they they stuck out their hand and shake their hand. You know they weren't greeted the way that Hawaiians did, which is with ha, like press your forehead and your nose together with, with someone and you, you take in their breath and their life, you know, you're just, you're taking in all that mana or their power with them. And you exchange that with people, you know, you, so you really get connected to people on a different level. And so, uh, when that wasn't done, they're like, uh, like, what is this? You know? So that's just kind of a way or an expression of white people. Haole, you know, um, but you're right. They, people use it derogatorily, but also I'm just like, oh, are they Kamaaina or are they Kanaka or are they, are they Haole? Like it, it could be used that way where it's not really a big deal. But I would say majority of the time it's something that's used derogatorily. And if it's somebody just being disrespectful or not driving with aloha or anything of that, and so it's not bad all the time. It can simply be mean like, oh, she's a healthy girl, meaning like, oh, she's, she's a white a girl. Go look. Yep. She's a foreigner. She's yep. she's that because it can technically not mean white. Right. Like yes, it could mean yep. someone could be African-American and you guys describe somebody like that. Yes. And it, I mean, it's not typically used for any other way, but you're you're 100 percent right. Like how could be anybody. It's just a foreigner. Yep. I have to say. Hawaiians hate influencers. They do not like influencers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you're kind of right. <laughs> why? In a, of, in a lot of ways. I want to hear <laughs> from you. Why is that? Why do they not like influencers? And I know this is touchy because <laughs> I'm an influencer. But yeah. I just want to, I don't know. I want to hear your perspective on it. So Hawaiians just feel like their land isn't theirs anymore. So you're talking about... Um, People who are there um, taking from the land and not giving back, right? So influencers in general, they just, in any any area, and especially Hawaii, it's it's glorified. It, all you see is a highlight reel of paradise, you know? And it's what everybody wants to see. I mean, it's, it's incredible. It's really pretty. But Hawaiians just feel like the land and stuff is not theirs anymore. So when you're exposing these things and you're showing these things... Um, more and more people are going to come to spots that have once felt local and only locals were at. And now it's getting exposed because so-and-so is like, hey, check me out at this selfie, like this video. Geotagging. I'm, I'm here at this location. You guys should all come and check it out. Next thing you know, there's there's hundreds of people like every single day at this spot, which once used to be for the Kanaka, the Kama'aina, and it is no longer that way. And so... I feel like it's kind of left a bitter taste in a lot of Hawaiians' mouths because of that reason. Um, but there's a lot the, more to it but, too. But at the same time, like, I think it's just important for influencers in general to, to learn how to give back. You have such a big platform, um, uh, with lots of people, lots of eyes. And if you, if you are going to live there, like, okay, that's, it's no big deal, but figure out ways that you can give back to the community, like figure out how you can use your platform to educate people and how to better the place that that's there because um, people are going to keep coming, but what are you going to do about it? That's going to help what's going on. Yeah. And I <laughs> agree. This is for me, it really opened my eyes since we live there part-time every year. Kiloni and I live in Utah part-time and then we go to Hawaii part-time just so our kids can experience the culture. And it was really eye opening to me this last time we were living there of how much of a problem influencers create in the sense of is that they are using the backdrop of Hawaii to create campaigns and to get paid and ads. And they are doing absolutely nothing 
to that backdrop, to that island, to those people who have created that so they can do that. Because 100%, there are so many companies who will pay an influencer who lives on Hawaii because they live on Hawaii, because they have that backdrop. And it doesn't matter if somebody has 2,000 followers or if they have a million followers. If you're using the backdrop to perform a workout routine, if you're using it to create a campaign and ad, and you're doing absolutely nothing to raise awareness to issues that are going on in Hawaii, like the housing market or the beach cleanup or anything of that, I feel like is taking advantage of the land and the people. And I completely understand why Hawaiians are so angry because they're just bringing so many people. And so some things that you can do when you're traveling is not geotagging. So if you go on a hike or anything like that, don't tag what the hike is or, or what to do. I think it's totally fine and not fine. I think it's great if influencers or anyone's traveling there that they promote local businesses. Absolutely. That is totally great. And I think that's helping the locals out. Um, but when it's local beaches or local hikes or local things, I, that's where it gets really iffy to me. Like, uh, yeah, no, you should probably shouldn't be doing that. And same for the people who live there than respect that maybe aren't born and raised there, but they do give back to the community. They have the Aloha spirit. They embody that and they are there living too. And then all of a sudden it's just bombarded with a ton of people. Another thing that I feel like opening my eyes with influencers is that when they're promoting their highlight reel, they're portraying a life in paradise that is actually not what Hawaiians experience. Absolutely. Yeah. I, you're hundred percent correct. Like the lifestyle that we're able to live because you do influencing and I do firefighting. Like, um, that's not the normal, like the areas that we stay are also not predominantly native Hawaiians because it's super unaffordable. So you're talking about Hawaiians that live in, in cities and small homes, like multiple families living in, in a single family dwelling. And that's how you grew up. And that's how I grew up, um, which is normal for me. But looking back on it, it's because, you know, the price of the cost of living is just so high. And and multiple of these families all have to live together in order to make, make ends meet. Like they're paycheck to paycheck because everything's so expensive and everyone's working their tail off, you know, to, to do that. But Uh, also with the, the whole influencing thing is that it's such a tricky line because sometimes we get hate and especially I can get hate if you're not in the video. If I'm saying like a day in my life in Hawaii and I'm showing my life and because you did say like our life is not normal when we live in Hawaii, that's not what Hawaiians lives are. They go to nine and five job. They are working to make, me and me, but on the same part, it's that like fine line for us is like, we want to show our life in Hawaii and we understand we're really privileged to have this life now because we've worked really hard for it and yep. we've saved all our money. And I want to like, keep in mind, Kiloni and I did not come from money at all. And I'm not saying we're like multimillionaires, but we have worked to what we have with our homes and to being able to get back home. And we find it such a privilege to go back and be able to share our lives back at home because we never thought in a million years we could afford to go back home to Hawaii. Especially the way we do it, right? To yeah. To do it at months at a time. Yeah. It's not cheap. But yes, and I do think that is an issue when influencers are promoting the beach life every single day. And then they're just not giving back to the community. And it's something as simple as like a, a local company is coming to you to help promote their brand or promote their business. And you give the media kit where a media kit is basically of how much you charge um, as an influencer. And instead of just like helping the local family out or helping the business out that is local, just promoting it and it costs you nothing. It's like you're making them pay. And so that that's where it gets like kind of cringy to me that you're not giving back to the community. Yeah. I think there's a fine line too, right? Because it's just tricky. Like Influencers have to make money too. They have to, you know, figure out a way to make money. And Absolutely. Live. So you have that portion of it, but your time, you know, can be free, you know, like whether, whether you're just helping auntie down the road or some of the kupuna or like the older folks, like do something, um, or doing beach cleanups or clean up the park. Like those things are, are free. Like anybody can do that stuff. And it's really not that hard to, to do. I also want to touch base on the housing market 
there and why it's so bad and how it's gotten so bad. A, a lot of times people don't understand, and I don't know the answer to this, is it's so expensive to live there, not just because it's an island, but because people are coming in that have an, an immense amount of money and they're buying homes. And it's not the purpose to buy a home, give back to the community and to be there and to live the Aloha spirit. It's the purpose is to buy one, two, three homes as investments. So when people are traveling, they can make a ton of money from it. So when traveling, when the housing market, some things that I suggest is like, do not rent from Airbnb or VRBO. Most of the time, those aren't locals that are doing that. And if you are renting from Airbnb and VRBO, there's actually a lot of guidelines now in Hawaii when there's an Airbnb. But ask a simple question and ask if they are Kanaka or they are local Hawaiian um, where they got this property. Because a lot of times properties are passed down through family and they have an extra property and that's the way they make income, which is great. But when it's multiple properties that people are buying for investments, that's where it runs into the issues of all the aunties, uncles, cousins living together. And that's what was mind blowing to me when I first went to your house there, they have the main house and then you guys have an Ohana, which is like the mother-in-law unit. And so it's like your grandparents and then like cousins and your uncle all live in like the main house. And then you and your other family live in the small little Ohana. And then every night, everyone is outside of your house, like your whole family, which is so cool. But yeah, it was just a gathering place. Honestly, like it was looking back, it was really cool because I was able to spend so much time with family every single day because everyone's always together because of, you know, housing or whatever, whatever the case might be for other people. But yeah, we had, we had to do that because we, the price of living is just insane, you yeah, know, it's and, insane. and because it's so desirable, it, it's so expensive. It's crazy. Okay. I want also to, one of the main things that I see on my channel is like, okay, this isn't just ex happening in Hawaii. This is happening everywhere. Like I live in Florida or I live in Texas and people are just coming. And I, this was all not our land at once, right? Everyone had their land taken away from them at some time. Oh my God. It's just so, so it's so cringy. When so I see bad. stuff like that, it just drives me bonkers because, oh, it might be happening in Florida. I'm sure it is. Like it's happening here in Utah. Like people moving in, things getting more expensive. But you're talking about a kingdom. You're talking about a yes. race, a nationality that, that has its own culture, its own language, its own people, native its to, own money, its own money, all native to that land. Correct. And having that culture like diminishing because everyone's moving away. Like you're talking about land that, that was once theirs that is no longer theirs because it was overthrown, you know? So like it to compare a race, a culture, a language and things of that sort to, Florida or Utah or California. It's just, it's, it's not a, it's not tomatoes to tomatoes. It's, it's very way different. It's like this. When you were <clears throat> filling out school papers or college and it asks you what race you are, has white, has Hispanic, and then it has native Hawaiian on there slash Polynesian. And I, I think that's where people are kind of getting like blurred lines and grade lines from that is that it, it is its own race and its own people. And I hope this podcast doesn't come off of like angry or anger or anything like that. We're simply just trying to help yeah, educate yeah. and how to travel more respectfully and help. I feel like there's a sense in me being your wife. My kids are Hawaiian. You are Hawaiian. And that culture is now part of my life and part of me and it will always be a part of me. And I feel like there's a sense like we have to do our part and help educating and getting this out there. And so I want everyone who's listening to this is if this somehow has impacted you or if there's anything we can do to help educate even more of how to help our followers, leave us a comment, leave us a review and like tag us so we can personally thank you for this listening to this podcast and how we can also help because we only have so much we can do with our two brains and we're trying our best, but sure. that's where we're trying is like, we're, we're trying here to like promote Aloha spirit and how to travel with respectfully with our platforms. Yeah. I'm no professional. You're no professional with these topics, but all we can try to do is educate, inspire and teach people what we know and also keep learning ourselves in order to better that place and to, 
educate people continually, you know? Yeah. Well, we want to thank you guys for listening to this. I appreciate you for educating me as your wife and to continue to educate me and allow me into the culture and to really try to understand it and be a part of it. It is the most beautiful thing ever. Anyone who gets to experience the true Hawaiian culture, not the I'm traveling to Hawaii, staying in a five-star resort and that culture, that is not Hawaiian culture, but the actual people and the goodness, they are some of the most kind, loving people ever. And so I just appreciate you for letting me be a part of that. Oh, absolutely. I love you. And I appreciate you wanting to be better and educate people about it. It means a lot to me. All right, you guys. Thank you and have a great day.